Welcome to the fourth episode of MSC India's web series Love Beyond Words. The series where we talk to you about love in the context of marriage and what you can do to make your marriage more blessed. Welcome everyone, we're glad to have you back. If you're watching this live with your spouse, do let us know. For those of you who are new, make sure to watch the first three episodes of this series. You can find the links in the description below. Before we begin, let us call upon the Lord in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So, Andrea, we've been seeing so many videos of parents nowadays who are you know, spending time with their children like cooking and baking and making funny videos and so on right yes indeed i'm sure all you parents out there might be having a good time and some of you definitely might be having a tiring time a question that a lot of us parents may have is am i a good parent what do i do to raise my child right and what makes a good loving family in today's session we have a couple who has inspired us a lot francis and anna who will address all these questions and what we can do to navigate the great blessing of parenthood. Francis and Anna have been married for 40 years and are the parents of three children, Ian, Andrea and Vanessa, who have families of their own and are the doting grandparents of six. Those are some strong parenting credentials here. So let's not waste any more time and get on to the session Kids Incorporated with Francis and Anna. Thank you, Andrea and Byron. Hi everyone and welcome to Kids Incorporated. Sounds like a business venture, doesn't it? It is a venture that brings the greatest returns and abundant blessings. It is the venture of raising our kids to become the men and women that God created them to be. Marriage, family and children are very dear to God's heart and they are His creation as we are told in Psalm 127. Children are a heritage from the raw, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Blessed is the man who has a quiver full of them. I am Francis. This is my lovely wife, Anna. We have been married for 40 years and we have three lovely children, Andrea, Ian and Vanessa who themselves are married now and have children of their own. We're talking about parenting. This has always been a very hot topic because in today's world, we realize that parents are so concerned about their children that they do not know how to parent because or raise, the children, raise their, their kids up because so much of information is being given to them through social media, through books, through health self groups, and through well-meaning uh, counselors. You know, um, when we look at parents, okay, who struggle with all these things because of the information, they don't realize what is the right thing or what not is the right thing. What do you say, Anna? I believe the ground reality today is that parents find it very difficult to connect to their children. They think that their children are aloof, that they don't listen to them, that they don't obey them. Besides that, there is also a lot of peer pressure. They move among friends who have high-end mobiles, who wear branded clothes. And so they also demand these same things from their parents, and which creates a lot of stress in the lives of the parents. Also, the parents don't know how to bring order into their children's lives. They are confused because the children tell them that they are old-fashioned and that they are curbing their freedom. And so it is very difficult for parents to lay curfews for their children or bring order into their children's lives. 
and also in this business of life the whole faith dimension is lost you know when we were young i remember you now that uh, society was very clear about what is legal what is not legal what is right what is wrong what is moral what is not moral and the parents took the responsibility of educating and bringing up their children you know the primary responsibility of raising their kids was parents and uh, it's a god given mandate to up to to the parents and that cannot be changed it's not actually the responsibility alone but they also have the authority to look into their children's life to teach them to guide them and to shape their lives you know whenever parents turn to god and look to him for wisdom the that family those families actually are blessed as we read in psalm 128 3 and 4 Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Lo, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. In these sessions, we want to share with you the four C's, the letter C, that we use in raising our kids. Okay, they are commitment, communication, correction, and companionship. Today we will be talking about two of these. The first is commitment. Early in our um, family life or married life, we decided that our commitment to our children and our family would be only second to our commitment to God. And so this involved a lot of change. It was not easy. It involved a lot of sacrifice, and we had to put aside our own personal preferences and desires and together work to raise our children. I came from a family where I had a working mother when I was a little girl and many times I wanted her around and she wasn't there which created a lot of resentment and pain in my life. So I decided that when my children came along I would give up my job, a job that I loved and enjoyed. I was a banker. But I decided to be a stay-at-home mom and be there for my children. And one of my greatest joys was when they would come back from school and from the door they would say mama I'm home. and then they would put down their bags kick up their shoes and get ready for lunch and around that table they would just share about their day about what they had done or what they had experienced the fights they had got into the the um, the difficulties they had faced in school the fun they had had it all came out and i was able to stay in touch with their lives or in the occasional time when i wasn't there for lunch and i at the end later i would ask them how was your day they would just say oh it was okay nothing much happened and i realized that if i wasn't present to them when they came then the moment was lost you know when i got when I, when i got married to anna i was working in shifts and there were times when i was walking into the house and anna was preparing to go to work and the same thing happened in the evening you know when anna came back from work i was either sleeping or trying or preparing myself to go to work and i was asking myself what is this life family life and i was not too happy with it and i was longing for a general shift i i got general shift uh, some uh, some time later and i decided that i would not go into shifts if i was going to work in the company i would enjoy my general shift a few years later i was offered the a promotion to go into shift at the shift foreman and i declined it it went on for nearly 4 years in the fifth year my department by my head of the plant called me and asked me he says how come you don't want to grow in the organization and i told him i want to grow in the organization but i don't want to go into shifts and i told him i want a family life and i gave him a small you know like a small talk you know the holy spirit actually helped me and uh, he was so impressed with that and he said let me see what i can do for you uh within a year's time he actually gave me a, a, a department because the new department had started and he told me now you got to uh, you know look after the department you are the boss and i was my boss for all those years after till i retired and uh, one thing i can tell you is you know when i retired when i look back uh, i never lost actually the earlier time i lost so many increments and all that but when i retired i was in par with my colleagues and some of them were still behind me the two principles that govern my life one principle was god is my father 
And if God is my father, I, he wants the very best for my life. If only I put my trust in him. That's what I did. And the second principle was that found in Matthew chapter 6, 33, that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. Now coming back to our family and the commitment to our family, you know, we both had a relationship with God. And we wanted our children to also have the same relationship that we had. And so we said, the first thing that we are going to do is to have a fixed time of family prayer time. And we had it in the morning where we would offer the day to the Lord. We introduced Psalm 91 that, gives us, that gave us so much of hope and we talked about protection. And we also, and uh, you know, to say, tell you something, that our children immediately memorized that Psalm 91. And in the evening time, we had a fixed time, family prayer time in the evening. We would come together and also thank God for the day that has gone by. The second thing that we did was, both of us loved scripture. And so we said that they need to have a Bible. And so we gave each one of them a Bible and we would read alongside. But also to help us reading, we invested in uh, a Bible audio cassettes. And we would play the audio cassette. And all of us would open our Bibles and read alongside. We wanted to teach our children not just to read the Bible, but we wanted to teach them to uh, appropriate the promises of God and to live by the principles that Scripture gave us. And so um, I remember we uh, once the, uh, our, one of our children had a problem with their teacher. And the teacher was troubling the child and the child would come home very frustrated and upset. Going to school the next day was a big problem. So we told them, you know, scripture tells us, bless those who persecute you and, uh, and those who pray for those who hurt you. And so we uh, taught them to pray blessings for this teacher. And believe it or not, within a week after uh, praying for the teacher, the teacher changed and the child also experienced change in their lives. I would like to also give another example about my daughter. Suddenly one day she, we discovered she had a lump uh, on her knee. And it was worrying her, it was worrying us. But a priest friend told us, he says, why don't you lay your hand and pray the healing prayer over her? So every evening after our rosary time, we would lay our hands and pray the healing prayer over that, that area. And uh, within that month or two, you know, we discovered that the lump had disappeared. Uh, one of the things also that I wanted to introduce uh, in my, to my children was the relationship they could have with, their, with the Holy Spirit. You know, when I realized how important was the gift of the Holy Spirit, I told my children, you know, children, um, the Holy Spirit is your teacher, He is your helper, He is your guide. And so if you, you know, when you are studying and you find it difficult to study, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to help you? And not only that, I also told them that when you're answering your exams, let the Holy Spirit come and hold your hand and answer with you. And whenever you forget, just pray to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to recall to your memory whatever you have forgotten. You know, invariably, my children after the exam would come and tell us how the Holy Spirit helped them, you know, uh, when, in, in the time when they were struggling. Uh, you know, when I was introduced to this ironic blessing, uh, I decided to bless my children every day with the blessing that is found in, you know, Numbers 6, 24 onwards. You know, this is a blessing that God gave to Aaron, uh, to Moses and to Aaron to bless the, uh, to the, bless the Israelites. And this blessing is so very important for us. It says like this, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Every evening I would bless my children. Every day I would bless my children by name. Until today, though my children are not with me, I bless my wife, I bless my, my children and my grandchildren by name. Sacramental life also was very important to our family. And Sunday Mass meant all of us went for Mass together. And when our little one was small, um, we would take her along and she loved to sing. So she would promptly pick up a hymn book, hold it upside down, she didn't know to read, and she would sing a bit away. 
and uh, much to the amusement of those around her and embarrassment of her siblings. I thought maybe she was disturbing those around her, so I asked the priest, should I leave her at home? And he told me, by no means, just bring her along and let her praise God with her singing. And believe me, till today, she is still singing for the Lord. Also, monthly confession was a part of their lives. And we always encouraged the children to have a confessor. So they could, even at other times, go and meet this priest if they had difficulties or they needed to talk when they couldn't talk to us. Now maybe we will ask uh, Pritham and Melissa to share with us about their way of raising their kids. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Anna. My name is Pritham and this is my wife, Melissa. We've been married for 15 years and uh, we have four children. So when we got married, it was the deepest desire of Pritham and I that when we had children, we would be there around for them and that we both desired, we wanted a family that was firmly grounded in Christ and the Catholic faith. During the initial years of our marriage, both of us were working. So that meant that if we had our child, neither of us would be around to nurture her and to be there for the little things that really mattered to us. Once I resumed work, uh, once she was born, I resumed work. Even at work, I was constantly thinking of her. It was at this time that we considered if I could quit. And when we looked at our finances, we felt we could still meet our needs. Since then, Meli has been at home. Uh, through these years, we've had three more children. And there have been times when we felt uh, we just had about enough to get by. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we never uh, second-guessed that decision that we took for Millie to be at home and quit working. The benefits were quite clear, actually, uh, with the time that we got to spend with our children, to understand them, to nurture them, and to listen to them. It still continues. As for our second desire, that we wanted to raise a family for God, we saw that it was a real struggle with kids going to regular school with their busy schedules, the things that they were exposed to, the undue pressure that they had to face. We began to see that there was little to no time really for them to experience and have a deeper relationship with Jesus, apart from the rushed family prayer that we would have just before they left for school. So in the year 2017, uh, we took this bold step, uh, decision to homeschool our uh, children. Uh, since then, we've experienced the fruit of that decision. We've been able to go for Mass every day. Uh, we've been able to say our family prayer every day. We've been able to uh, read the Gospel, reflect and discuss the Gospel with our children every day. We've been able to get them to do their personal prayer as well. But apart from that, we've, we've experienced this immense joy of spending time together as a family and watch our children grow uh, to the true selves, uh, beings that they've been created to be. Uh, we watch them uh, grow in their interest of music, uh, spend time uh, in sports, creative writing, oratory, flow art, and so on. Besides all this, they've also grown uh, in their love and bond as uh, siblings. Uh, there's an immense amount of joy and well-being amongst themselves. Uh, above all this, I think what we've really seen is uh, we've seen them uh, enjoying that, their childhood, uh, their freedom, and uh, growing uh, holistically as uh, individuals. Yeah, so that's about it uh, from our end. Uh, back to you, Francis and Anna. Thank you, Pritam and Melissa, for your sharing. Now, can we talk about the second C? The second C is communication. You know, the lines of communication with our children were always open, and we wanted this to happen. You know, uh, when I read about John F. Kennedy, who was the 35th President of the United States of America, the children, when they were having a problem among themselves, they knew they had direct access to, the, to, their, to their father. So however busy the president was in the Oval Office and addressing heads of nations or whatever, they had the, the, the freedom to just walk in the Oval Office and uh, meet him and talk to him. And he didn't feel embarrassed. He would tell the heads of the power of the nation, you know, excuse me, my child is here. He would uh, address them, whatever, reassure them and send them. 
The children knew that their father was never too busy for them. So this is the thing that I always wanted to in my life, that my children had direct access to me and I wanted them to know that I was never too busy for them. You know, <clears throat> so we decided that we need to grow in our relationship with them. And one thing that we did was to we introduce the one-on-ones. Now one-on-ones means like how, you know, like uh, Hital and Kevin talked about last week, they said they have heart-to-heart -heart among couples. We decided that we will have the one-on-ones. The one-on-ones is nothing else but giving a special evening, a special time for each child every week. And so my, my son had one time and my daughters had another time altogether. When I spent time with my daughters, it was to build them up and to, for them to experience the love from their father. And they could talk to me and they could share their life with me. But I had a special concern about my son when during my one-on-ones. So I would tell my son, you know, this guy is precious for me and uh, is precious for you. So you can ask me to do whatever you want. And many times you would tell him, let's go out, let's go for a bite. And he would sit there, he would share his life with me and I would help him in different ways. Even at times when he was at home, I would involve him with all the home uh, activities that I did. Like repairing the taps, I would involve him, changing the bulbs, changing a, uh, a tube light, or even doing a little bit of carpentry work. Because that was very essential for him to grow as a man, to know what he was called to do when he gets married. You want to say anything else? And even till today, okay, uh, whenever he is working at home, okay, doing his own work, he will ring me up and say, Papa, are you free? I say, what's up, Ian? He said, no, Papa, I'm involved in doing some. If you're free, why don't you join me? Let's work together. These one-to-ones with our children were very important to us. You know, I would spend time with my son, just talking to him about life, talking to him about what's happening in his life and sharing with him what things were like so that he would learn to respect women and also he would prepare himself to love, honor and respect and serve his own wife when he got married. But more important than that, it was spending time with my girls so that I could train them to be the women that God had created them to be and to train them in practical ways to be homemakers. And so I would spend time with each of the girls, first of all, doing whatever they felt that they needed to do. Maybe sometimes they needed to shop for some clothes or do something. Then we would go out together and I would help them, advise them, uh, help them also teach them how to make decisions in a proper way. Then we would also sometimes go for a bite and just spend time together, chilling and talking. And in that time, I would sometimes address issues in their life which I need, knew needed to be addressed. I would talk to them about the facts of life. But at home, I would also teach them skills that are needed in the home, like cooking. They didn't enjoy that. Okay, They wanted to run away from it. And they said, Mama, you cook. It's okay. But today, I believe that they did learn. And today, they are pretty good cooks themselves. And run homes of their own. Here I would like our daughter Vanessa to come and share with us about her experience of our raising her up. Thank you mom and papa. Hi guys, I'm Vanessa and this is my husband Elton and together we have a daughter named Emily. So uh, while I was growing up my parents always made sure that I knew that their door was always open to come and talk, sit, quietly even or even argue with them and this op uh, open door situation really helped me grow in relationship with my parents you know in school I wasn't really interested in studying and therefore my grades were dropping massively finally my parents really needed to sit with me and ask me what was going on that is then I told them I didn't want to study anymore all I wanted to do was sing and of course at that moment they told me that was not going to happen they put their foot down, laid out some boundaries and they told me I needed to graduate and then I could do what I please with, with music. Um, I was really upset with them, I was angry but as days went into months and years I realized that they had enrolled me in music classes and singing classes, they encouraged me to sing in a gospel band, in a choir and in, in that way uh, support that dream of mine, support that desire of my heart 
and I truly felt that they heard and cared for me at that moment. Um, another thing that is very close to my heart is the one-on-ones they had with us while we were grow- growing up. They were these little magical dates they take us on individually and uh, uh, maybe for a dosa or even for an ice cream. It was a time where we could just be ourselves. There was no disciplining or no saying, you know, you did this, you didn't do that. It was a time we could just chat. And I remember a particular time I happened to tell my mom, you know, I wanted a pair of branded jeans. I was in the 11th standard. And she told me, it's not in our budget. We live by a certain budget and I can't get you those jeans. I was upset, but there was nothing I could do about it. But a couple of months later on another one-on-one with her, she took me by bus to Vasco to another city uh, where there was a there was a factory outlet. And that's where I bought my, she bought me my first pair of jeans, branded jeans. And it is then I truly realized that she, my parents truly cared for me. They truly listened to me. Um, they knew my heart's desire. Something as petty as a pair of jeans, they went the extra mile to get it for me. I totally agree with Vanessa. She and her parents have shared a beautiful relationship and also are very open in their communication and I'm a witness to that. And Vanessa and me have decided, even with our little Emily, that we will raise her up and the children to come to always have an open communication in our home. In regards to -to one-to-one, in a small way when I come home from work every evening, Emily and me play for 40 to 45 minutes just before dinner or before she goes to sleep. And I truly cherish that one-to-one time. Back to you, mom and dad. Thank you, Vanessa and Elton, for sharing your life. It's been a joy for us and uh, me to talk about parenting and to share the first two C's. The first C, just to re- recollect, the first C is commitment to God and commitment to our family. And I want you all, as fathers who are watching, if you can, you know, look at the ironic blessing that's found in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And this evening can bless, before going to bed, bless your child. It will be nice. And the second C we talked about is on communication. Always keep the lines of communication open to your children. Let them feel free to come whenever they want and meet you all and talk to you all. Never be too busy for them. For the next two C, we will see you next Saturday. Till then, bye. And now it's over to Byron and Andrea. Thank you so much, Francis and Anna, for that wonderful session, inspiring as always. Thanks also to Preetam and Melissa, Elton and Vanessa for sharing your lives. So Byron, what were your takeaways from the session? My takeaway, I think, was how communication is so important in the family context and how it really helps in molding and building up the children. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next part of this session uh, about the other two C's and I'm sure all of you are as well. Of course, parenting is not a small topic that can be covered in one session for sure. So tune in next week for the second part of the session, Kids Incorporated. Don't forget to like this video, share it with others and comment your thoughts and questions. And that's it from us. We hope you have a great week ahead. See you soon. Stay Stay safe, safe, good good night night, and God God bless. Byron, it's Pentecost tomorrow. Yes, let us pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all the couples who are watching this. Yes.